Today we will be using a plastic bag, some white tape, some antique white platinum flower paste, 33 gauge and 24 gauge white wires, a non-stick rolling pin and board, a sea holly mould, sea holly cutters, ruscus cutters, fern leaf cutter, fern leaf veiner, hydrangea leaf veiner, powder colour spruce and iris, creme brulee torch, leaf glaze, petal park, dusting brushes and plain white tissues. To start with, take a small piece of platinum paste, press it into a sea holly mould very firmly, making sure the top edge is nice and neat. With a 24 gauge half length white wire, put a hook in the end of it. Light your creme brulee torch. Remember that when you are working with flames like this, to keep your leaf glaze covered and to work in a safe manner. Put the hook into the flame, holding it steady until it glows red hot. Insert it into the paste, switch your torch off. You can then squeeze the mould, which will help to release it, and then gently take the sea holly centre out on the wire. The next step is to colour it. With iris powder colour, work it through your brush onto the tissue and brush firmly all over the centre making sure you cover all parts of it. Remember to check the tip. Next take your spruce powder colour. Work it really well through the brush so that you are not dropping any colour anywhere and lightly brush it over the little knobs and pimples on the centre so that you can still see the mauve colour through underneath the green. Dip it into the leaf glaze. Blot it gently on your tissue and stand it to air dry a little. Now take a small piece of platinum flower paste and roll it out on your board. You need to roll it firmly to and fro. There is no need to keep picking it up. There is no need to grease or flour your board. Just keep pressing firmly forwards and back so that you can see the colour of the board through the paste. And I find it best to leave a thicker piece at either end, as you can see in the picture. Now with a 33 gauge white wires, we're going to put five bracts around the centre. So five 33 gauge half length white wires. Because the paste is fine, because the wires are fine, we're not going to use a ridge or any of those methods. Instead, take a small ball, press it down the length of the wire, the length of the cutter. Squeeze it so it sticks to the wire and then twiddle and pull so that you coat the end of the wire for as long as the cutter. Pop that in your plastic bag and complete the remaining four wires. Then turn your paste over, pick it up gently from the board, flip it over so you cut from a less dry side to a more dry side and cut out your five bracts using the wider cutter. Skate the cutter around on the board, press your thumb over the edge so you get a nice clean edge and press it out. Remember to run your thumb round the edge of the cutter after you've cut out to remove any surplus sugar. When you've cut all five bracts out, 
you can then screw your remaining paste up and pop it back in the container. Next take your hydrangea vena, take one of your coated wires, lay the coated part the full length of the bract and press it firmly so that you can pick the bract up with it. Lay it on the vena, cover with the back vena and press very firmly. This will vein and wire the bract whilst thinning the cut edge so there's no need to use a ball tool to go around and do anything to the edges. When you've done all five bracts, it's time to colour them. And for this, again, work some iris colour firmly through your brush and flick it up from the wire end. Work some spruce colour through the other brush and gently bring it over the tips, both sides keeping your colour nice and light and dainty. And when you've done all five, dip them into the leaf glaze and blot them firmly on your tissue and park them. Now we'll put the sea holly together. Taking quarter width white tape, join it to the wire immediately under the centre. Take your bracts one at a time, bend the wire exactly where the paste finishes and place it under the head nice and tightly and catch it into place with the tape. Place each bract evenly around the centre until all five bracts are in position. When all five bracts are taped into position, check their position and then tape all the way down the wire. When you've taped all the way down the wire, you can start to shape. Stroke each bract between your finger and thumb so that it has a nice gentle curve and then brush the sides up to give it a little bit of shape. If you want a more closed one, then turn your wires in closer so you get this much more cupped effect. If you want them turned out because it suits your arrangement better, stroke them over the wire so they turn out. Remembering to just flick the sides up and do whatever is needed just to make them look attractive, slightly different to one another and realistic. You will see that the back is nice and neat because the paste is still soft and you're able to mould the back in to fit nicely. Now we're going to make my version of Weeping Fig. Weeping Fig can come in various colours but we're going to make this one to match our Sea Holly spray. And it's made in a very similar way to the Sea Holly. The paste is rolled out, the wires each have their little twiddles of paste down them which is popped in the plastic bag. I generally work on five leaves for a stem of Weeping Fig. As before, pick your paste up, flip it over, and cut out five leaves using a Ruskers cutter. As before, run your thumb round the edge, make sure they're clear. When they're all cut out, put your surplus paste away. And again, we use the hydrangea vena. And again, lay the coated wire right down the length of the leaf. Make sure the wire always goes right to the very tip of the petal or leaf because this is the support for the leaf. Cover with the back veiner, press firmly and again it's veined and wired with thinned edges. Do all five the same. Brush iris colour firmly up from the wire end. Brush some spruce down from the tip. And it's quite nice if you flick a little bit of spruce around the outer edge just to outline the leaf. When all five have been coloured, dip them into the leaf glaze, blot them firmly on your tissue and park them. Weeping Fig usually has a little stem showing, 
So this time, take your quarter width white tape and join it to the wire. Press it up the wire so that it touches against the leaf and then tape down for about an inch and do all five in the same manner. When taping the fifth leaf, don't break the tape off. Instead, tape a little further down and then start to join in your other leaves. These go on alternate sides and each one is slightly lower down the stem than the one before. When you tape in the next one, ensure that that too is slightly lower than the previous one and continue down the stem. When you have put the fifth leaf in position, then tape to the end of the stem. The leaves can now be shaped. Simply take a leaf between your finger and thumb and stroke. This will cause the wire to slightly curve and you'll have a realistic looking stem. The main centre stem can have a little bit of movement put into it and you have your finished weeping fig stem. Finally, for this arrangement, we'll make a stem of fern leaves. For this, the paste is rolled out as before. We are going to use seven little leaflets to make up the stem of fern. So it's seven 33 gauge wires, each with a twiddled end, each popped in the plastic bag. The paste again is turned over, cut out using a fern leaf cutter. And for these, they very often need to be pressed out from behind. When all seven have been cut out, take your wire, lay it as before, right into the tip of the leaf, and this time lay it on a fern leaf veiner. Press firmly, and again, veined and wired and thinned. Now to colour. For this, I tend to work with only the spruce colour. Work the colour well through the brush, put a nice firm coating at the tip, and brush on so that you can see a little bit of the veining showing through. Do the back slightly lighter, colour all seven, and then dip, blot them on the tissue, and park. And now to assemble the stem. To start with, join your quarter width white tape to the first leaf. Press it up tight against it, and tape down just a short distance. Bend the wire again at right angles and you need to tape two together at the same point on either side so they go out at right angles from the stem. When they're in position, tape down the wire for at least a half an inch. Then join in the next pair of leaves in the same manner, bending the wire, putting them nice and tight against the central stem and putting them both at exactly the same level. This time tape down for at least three quarters of an inch. and put the final pair of leaves in position, bending and setting exactly as before. When they are caught in position, you can then tape down the wire to the end.
straighten your leaves out so that you have the familiar fern leaf shape. Twisting them round, stroking them slightly upwards and stroking them over your finger to put a little curve into them. Pinch at the base so that they come in very slightly and aren't too flat and put a gentle curve in the length of the stem so they curve slightly backwards. For this arrangement I've used three sea holly heads, three stems of weeping fig and three ferns. Enjoy! Mm -hmm. 